Political correctness, using political correctness as a tool prevents people from saying what they really mean. It does, but actually so political you're correctness... you're limiting it, people's freedom to be able to say what they mean. Yes, but people are saying, people are, are saying we're using freedom of speech to, to expound political correctness as well. They're using freedom, of, to, but they're not. It's actually, it's, it's actually doing the reverse. Yes, I'm saying you can't, I, I, I have the right to say you can't say this. Because political correctness isn't legal. I mean, it's not the law. It's just people saying it's not acceptable for you to say this. And I'm telling you this. It's my right to tell you it's not okay, acceptable. That's, that's, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, and of course, what it is, it's, it's either poorly informed people uh, seeking some form of self-validation or people with a vested interest to, to promote a particular cause that they're trying to promote. Mm. But political correctness itself is simply is either... Is, is overtly a sign of a floundering society and it is it is a desperate attempt to reduce the strife caused by putting lots of diversely uh, um, different cultures and groups together without an without an overriding unifying but, 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 but to structure this round, because we did cover this last week and, mm. and, and today was really about conditioning and are we victims of conditioning ultimately we could talk about political correctness as a form of conditioning you have we to be are, yeah, that's we are right being conditioned to behave in a certain way yes we are and therefore prevent ourselves from saying things and in some ways w- it, it, could that be the reason that the polls got it so wrong when Donald Trump actually won the general ele- his general election because people were so scared of being stigmatized by saying what they really felt that they actually just voted for him silently which is why he got in yes i think that's a that's a very very good um, observation so, so in that respect, we are being conditioned, but ultimately we're repressing people from from their thoughts on, in some ways, aren't we? Actually, we're telling them what we're telling them what to think. We're telling them how to think, and it, it, and it's done from the moment we go into school, because let's face it, they're not teaching us every bit of information that we possibly can. They're telling us what they what they think we should be learning. Yes, and, and, and in fact, it's the, our, our, the, the legal way of doing things is no different from gang members uh, absorbing people and, and, and putting them more and more into debt so that they then become, um, uh, they, they then become uh, the, the prisoners of the gang because they're just in debt all the time. And as you put it, you know, we, we go through our, our education with our with our education educational inflation where you have to do more and more and get more and more into debt and then you get you get caught you you simply become uh, entangled in society where all you're doing is living to pay off your debt so how do you break them all then i mean i've got i've got my own thoughts but I, you know I, I could share it but my daughter you know i'm going through my daughter's or watching my daughter's journey in life and she's going very much against the grain of how other people are doing it um, and, and don't get me wrong I mean she did go to school she she talks about going to university however she's just recently been offered a job which I'm not sure I particularly agree with yet but it, but it is her journey was it you who told me the story of the fisherman who um, uh, was uh, sitting smoking a cigarette looking out across the sea uh, did we not do that one last week did we do that? Did we do that online last? Did we do that on the podcast last? It wasn't week? online. It was. It wasn't. It, okay, so there's a story I heard, and it was about the fisherman who, um, who's sitting. So he's sitting. He's sitting on the beach, and he's and he's watching. He's watching the waves, and he's watching the people on the beach, and things like this, and he's enjoying the sun. And you've got the MBA. You know, he's, there's a guy with an MBA. He's gone on holiday, and he sees the guy on the beach, and he and he has a chat with him, and he says to the guy, "So, what do you do?" He says, "I'm a fisherman." He says, "I fish two hours in the. Uh, I get up early. I fish for two hours a day, and then I feed my. You know, I I, I catch enough fish to feed my family, and uh, then I enjoy the rest of the day on the beach, watching. You know, watching life go by." And the uh, the graduate says to him, I says, well, do you know what? If you actually did six hours a day, you would actually catch three times as many fish. You could feed your family, then you could sell the, the, the other fish and earn enough money that you can buy a second boat and then a third boat and then a fourth boat. And then you could actually hire people to do those boats, uh, to, to actually fish those boats for you. And in about 10 years time, you'll actually have enough money so you can actually sit back and relax and watch, you know, and, and, and enjoy life. He says, well, what do you think I'm doing now? 
<laughs> exactly. You know, but of course, without that, then the, the current economic model would would f- would fail miserably, wouldn't it? But the, the economic model is failing miserably anyway. I mean, it's we, some of those in, owing money to somebody, isn't there? Well, you see, interestingly, I, I, again, I was watching um, uh, a, a TED talk. I forget who who it was, but essentially, every single society, every single company, has a shelf life. Um, and it's a sigmoidal growth, so it starts off slowly, accelerates incredibly rapidly, tails off, and then fails. Um, and to put it bluntly, we are in the failure stage of our current society. So what is going to happen? Because ultimately society has changed dramatically. Cataclysm is what's going to happen. Um, and it, it, what is going to happen? Cataclysm. Explain it. Uh, and in fact, there was... There was um, Nick Hanau, one of the richest uh, gentlemen in the world, was again. He gave a TED talk, um, and he said exactly that: the the the, the riots and uh, with pitchforks are not far away, and it's because of the the massive divide between the the haves and the haves nots, and and this is what happens with a failing society. The haves and the has nots. Well, you mean people who have a lot and people who don't have very yeah, exactly. much. Exactly. Because increasingly well, that, the, the gap is widening. Cap- oh, I thought you. I thought you were into capitalism. You, you are standing very much. Uh, you, you have been reading Trotsky, haven't you? <laughs> no, huh? but actually, you're a tro- you're a I'm trots. becoming Trotskyite j- uh, just through logic, actually. Uh, and don't forget, you and I, um, we we show people how to cope with modern society, and therefore we have to see the the weaknesses and the strengths and and how to deal with it if we choose to deal with it. It's it's an interesting one because I, I think there's a there's a fundamental problem here, and. I mean, socialism is very much about wealth distribution, and everyone has, and everyone has their fair share. And but ultimately, all that's going to do is prevent growth and prevent innovation going forward. You see, and, and people don't realise that because if you tax, because they're, t- they're talking about charging the richest ninety percent tax, for example. So if they are constantly creating and innovating and growing. You are then asking them to say, "Do you know what? We are going to. We're going to ask you to work harder than everybody else, but you, you've now got to distribute all the money that you actually earned elsewhere to society. What incentive is it for them to then keep on producing, keep on growing, to keep on innovating? Because let's face it, while well, well, we have a lot, a lot of these lefties over here who are hanging onto their iPhones, they are they are still buying into this whole culture." With, with, with the moral implication that actually it's wrong but, ult- but ultimately Apple and, you, and, we, and we've talked about it Apple are keep on releasing new phones they keep on growing keep on innovating and they keep on looking to make with more money with inbuilt obsolescence if you have an iPhone which is too old it will not it will, it will brick if, with the latest update can you imagine that? so, so but the thing is if, you keep, if you're going to take away chunks and chunks and chunks of what they've actually had, there's no incentive for them to keep on growing and developing because the people who actually aren't doing particularly well and this is where I think and it's not always a lack of opportunity because I think now the opportunity is becoming more even elsewhere you, you know if you want an education you don't need to you don't need to go to school for an education well, you've got enough information online to get an education well two things the um, I mean, Nick, Nick Hannah put it very well he said look um the, the, some, some of us use the argument that you know we do we we um, reinvest and we you know we spend and and so on. So it's good for us to have so much money. He said, absolute rubbish. That you know, there's only a certain number of trousers I'm going to go out and buy. Um, so actually, the the, the greater the uh, the haves and haves nots, it will simply continue on the cycle, and, and the gap will widen and widen and widen. So, but on the other hand, greater taxes are not the way to go either. Because you're right, these, it'll, it'll reduce the incentive for these people to do anything. So there needs to be some other way of um, showing people how to achieve ultimate contentment and, and, and uh, self-validation. And of course, people like Bill Gates are discovering it slowly, which is, which is giving its, its, um, its uh, philanthropy. Because, the, because at the end of the day, the, 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 more, the, the higher esteem you're held in society then the better you do feel. But it's not just the esteem, it's what you do to get the esteem, so it's your social connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and indeed, people have shown, for instance, that um, that uh, rich, the richer you get, the meaner you get, because you, you get to see yourself as different from who, other people. Who said that? Who came up with that? Uh, it's it's well-established research. And the, the richer you get, the meaner you get with what? The meaner you get... 
until but you can be shown you can be shown the value of reintegrating with society and 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 becoming philanthropic and then and then you do change okay um because it's it's how you view yourself as different. It's mirror neurons. So hyper wealthy people, uh, uh, and in fact they all congregate in certain areas. You see, and and they smoke their cigars right, and they drink their like champagne. Like. That's it. Um, so it's it's mirror neurons. So they 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 see themselves as relating only to other hyper wealthy people, and they they see the uh, the the have nots as a different race. Quite frankly. Well, there you go. So, I think we've worn that one out today. It's interesting, actually, because just before we wrap up, um, as you probably all realise, we have, there's no coffee machine going on in the background today because we've actually changed venues. And we were talking just before we actually started this. I said, you know what, this is a nice, quieter place. We are, and uh, the thing is, we like to go to, 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 to a coffee place and have a coffee and enjoy a chat and a relaxed atmosphere. It's not supposed to be a home, a home podcast. It's supposed to be the hustle and bustle of, of life when we're having a coffee as we do every week. You know, we don't have to do a podcast, uh, but we just choose to. And we've come here today, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice little place. Um, but the problem is, it, because it's so quiet, it lacks that energy. It lacks that... Um, it lacks something, don't you think? It does. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good place to sit and do some work. Um, but certainly, to to have a to have a a, um, a a vibrant it lacks vibrancy, and I think that's it's, it, 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 that, sitting you know. somewhere where there's vibrancy around you is, is stimulating. So, so next week you might get that coffee machine grinding <laughs> in the background again. We will have to see because I I, I, I far more I far more enjoyed that, and I, I was I think I was far more energized. Yes. With what I actually wanted to say, as opposed to today, I'm feeling a little bit more. Because we feed off our environment, don't we? We feed off our environment. We feed off the energy of what's around us, don't we? Yes, we do. A take-home message is this: the the reason why we are such suitable substrates where we where we fall victims so easily is our own baseline anxiety and change the word anxiety to arousal we're all constantly trying to reduce our arousal in the past we simply had to survive and escape predators that's how we reduced our arousal in today's society we're given any number of different ways of doing it and we do it reflexly because reflex is the quickest way of surviving so if you want to take control and stop being taken advantage of you have to simply become self-aware and you can google mindfulness mindfulness is a very good way of doing it but it's simply becoming aware in other words do i need this or do i want it just ask yourself that question because we're constantly doing what we think we need to do in life which is why we feel we have less control and why more of us are getting depressed also, you should go to impactfasttrack.com and you can uh, get some information on there and probably take one of the free tests that's available to become to get some self-awareness and actually to take an element of control. I mean, we're not, you're not going to be able to control everything you want to do in society, but you can control a certain amount of things through discipline and self-awareness and and uh, and your own conditioning. Mm. Now, what was that? Was that email link, that uh, website again? Imp- impactfasttrack.com. Impactfasttrack.com. Oh, sorry, so that's my that's my company website. But because it's important as well. Because if you actually want to maintain a level of control. Um, within the society that we work in you've got to have a, a level of self-discipline you know, you know it's like being on a diet or, or, or being on an eating plan it requires a level of discipline going to the gym and I'll be, I'll be, I've only been twice three, ti- three times this week and so I've been I've, I've, I've got to give myself a slap on the wrist and it doesn't matter if you fall off the wagon every now and then it's, it's important that you, you are consistent and you, you get into the habit a positive habit of doing things consistently, being disciplined of how you actually live your but life. The reason you're continuing to do it is because you see the results. So there always has to be an, a balance between effort and reward. And of course, in today's society, nothing is ever enough. Therefore, you have endless effort to get the reward. And that's, again, why there's an imbalance. And the thing is, people who don't see the effort very early on, that's why they give up. So we so we do need some instant uh, instant reward to be able to uh, know that we're actually on the right track. Otherwise, we'll veer off it very quickly. Anyway, guys, I'm, we're going to leave it there. We've been blabbering on long enough for a coffee, and 
we, we've got other things to do today so we hope you enjoy yourselves have a good week and uh, if you like what you hear please comment please leave us a review um, because we really want to improve and be able to give you value thank you very much